I'm Doug from Orphan Espresso. And I'm Barb. And uh, we're here to do a, a short segment on the Kim Espresso machine. Uh, it, it, it turns out that the Kim is a little bit complicated. Uh, no more than many espresso machines, but uh, in just two machines we have found a lot of uh, hardware differences uh, within the machines that uh, I feel we feel deserves to be discussed. We've seen a few of the Kim machines, which are represented here by this style machine, this format. Uh, we've seen uh, quite a few of them change hands recently on uh, eBay Italy and elsewhere and have had some interest in parts for the machines and we've been able to source the seals um, but we uh, are a little concerned about a certain uh, uh, of the uh, ability to, to swap parts from one to another. Uh, interchangeability of parts is always an issue with these old machines. Uh, we've even seen the name spelled a different way uh, in different places that this is the K-I-M. We've seen it spelled K-Y-M. Uh, but they, by all appearances, seem to be the same machine. This, the, this brown machine, this is a 110 volt model and has steam function. This uh, cream colored machine is a 220 volt model and it has no steam function. Uh, the seals, thankfully, for both machines are identical, uh, although there is a slight difference as well. All the parts for the one machine are on this side, the other machine is on this side. Here's the seals in the center. Well first, when you get into your machine, let me give you a little hint. Uh, the lever is applied to the top, as you see on this machine. Okay. Now, when you look, when you see this type of application, the first thing you think is that I'm going to remove the four bolts and I'll just pull out the, the entire inner mechanism. Uh, that's an illusion in this case. When you remove the four bolts, it doesn't come out. And so you work under the side and you pry and you try to step it off and try to walk it off. And what you'll see once you finally go through this is that under this, it's this. This does not allow the piston and spring to move out. This is actually the top of the entire cylinder that goes through. Uh, this part here, heaven forbid you would have to remove it, but it can only be removed with a tool like this. This is a, so a flange socket that is uh, custom made. And this, this is the manner to remove it. It's very tight. Uh, there is, I can not see that there are any seals associated with it, so I recommend just leave it alone. Um, but, so to get to, to take the machine apart, you can basically leave this in place. This is not an issue. Uh, there's under the under the group, which basically can only be accessed by removing the base, as you see. We look under here, and you you will see that there is the dispersion screen is held in place here on a small ridge, and it's it's there's a spring clip that holds it in place. The spring clip is very similar, and I fa in fact I think it is a uh, uh, a portafilter uh, retention spring that is what's used in here in this groove. Uh, so you remove the, the spring clip and you'll likely find that you can't get this out. Uh, it, it, there's, there's just no way to grab a hold of it and it doesn't fall out by, uh, by gravity. You don't want to poke any holes in it. So the way I disassembled this machine, both of these, was to, I removed the spring I took the, the machine off the base so I could gain access to this area. Then, with the, I removed the clip from the pin, took the clip off, and pushed the pin through with a, a thin wooden stick. And once the pin leaves, pop, the entire
entire thing comes out. Uh, it, through the bottom it, of the group. It just comes out through the bottom. The first thing that happened was that it, it, it popped the, the screen off and the stick, I just used a little shish kebab stick, a little bamboo stick, and the stick retains the, the piston so you can just tap it and when it breaks the stick the rest of the piston comes out, not with an extreme force. Uh, but uh, that's the way I managed to disassemble it, as I said, taking the base off and just knocking the pin out. You could hold that, the, you could put a large clamp on and hold it in place and pull, it, pull the, the stick or the pin out uh, with a little more sophistication, but it didn't seem to, to matter in, in, in our case. Uh, but as I said, there's no reason to take off this top plate. Uh, the top plate only serves as the boss. To, to hook the lever on. Okay? Once you do get it apart, see, you know, this is, well, my screen is now in there as I say it. it it's pretty well seated. Uh, to get the portafilter gasket out, you do have to, as I said, it's easiest to have the base off, which is held on by four bolts, and you might have to unhook the electricity. Now, that's basically all there is to the to service on the machine is the, is the group area. Uh, and the seals are fairly straightforward. It requires a large O-ring as the portafilter uh, gasket. Uh, o that it takes O-rings for piston seals. There's another O-ring for the for the top for the the lid seal. And so, you know, once you get the machine apart, it's fairly simple. But let's look at the differences between these two machines and. That's kind of the critical thing that we want to talk about. This is the piston and spring that came out of the 220 machine. This is the piston and spring that came out of the 110 machine with steam function. As you see, they're two quite different pistons, two quite different springs. This has a machined groove which holds the spring in this position. This has an outer lip machine once again that holds the spring in that position. I am fairly confident that these are the original parts. I don't have a sense that these machines have ever been taken apart before I did. Uh, this spring, of course, appears to be much stronger than this spring here. Uh, we'll see how it works out once I put the machines back together. As you can see now, you have four O-ring seals on one piston only three o-ring seals on the other piston. Thankfully the seals are all the same size so a universal kit will provide four piston o-rings that will fix either one. You note they're the same length. The, the rod when it's screwed in all the way tight exactly the same length so in a sense the pistons would, would be interchangeable. Uh, some uh, other differences I uh, see and I don't want to mix these parts up no matter what I do the drip tray and grate is a one-piece affair that's, that has been uh, spot welded together around the edge, if not completely. What did you think, Barb? Do you think it was soldered? No, uh, I don't think so. I think it was spot welded and it's just pressed quite closely. The, yes, it's pressed together and uh, the, this, this piece here looks a lot like a soap dish of some kind. Uh, it's interchangeable between uh, both of the machines as well. The uh, top pieces are slightly different. One's a little taller than the other uh, on the on the edge, and you know, slightly different manufacturer uh, as well. The uh, the steam uh, function, uh, the steam wand is uh, very simple. It takes a, a single O-ring to seal the shaft, and it has a pointed uh, a pointed uh, brass shaft that seats on a metal seat uh, down inside of here. Um, Probably the biggest uh, difficulty that these machines are going to present, like so many, is missing portafilters. This is a 58 millimeter portafilter, as you see, with the locking lugs that are off on the sides. Uh, this, uh, we have found that the baskets, though they're 58 millimeters, are quite shallow on the double basket. Uh, one of the machines came with a single basket. I have the feeling that this is just a standard commercial single basket. There appears to be nothing unique about it. Uh, 
but uh, commercial 58 millimeter baskets will fit as long as they're not too deep. A regular 14 gram uh, double basket will fit both of these and fit in the machine, as would the singles as well. Now, but the catch is, I'm keeping these separate, the catch is the portafilters between these two machines, though they appear identical, they, they, aren't, they don't interchange back and forth. And you can see the reason right here. If you look at the, you get a good picture of that, if you look at the placement of the, the locking lugs on the portafilter, the, this machine takes place, the, the placement is that the, the, the lug is closer to the edge. This machine, it's, the lug is a bit farther down from the edge. This portafilter will not lock into that machine. It, it simply would not. The, the portafilter would have to be uh, adapted. Uh, the critical point of you, uh, a commercial uh, portafilter with that placement of the locking ears or lugs um, could fit as long as the, the lugs were ground to match whichever machine you were trying to accommodate. As you can see, they're the same size. They're the same length and they're the same width, but they're placed slightly different on the portafilter. We do see uh, differences with uh, many of the machines within the same family. Uh, a lot of times it just has to do with tolerances, uh, but uh, the, the, the parts are usually interchangeable. In the case of these Kim machines, uh, I think that you're going to find that not all of the parts are interchangeable. We're gathering more information on this. It could be that it'll turn out that ridged handles fit one family, smooth grips fit another family. Uh, there are slight manufacturing differences uh, in these portafilters, but if you have a machine with no portafilter, there's no guarantee that you can buy a second machine for parts and uh, rob the portafilter on, off of it to use without uh, modifying the, the portafilter for your own use. Uh, I think that uh, uh, that basically covers the uh, the Kim machine. Uh, they're not all going to be the same. Uh, you're not uh, necessarily going to be able to to uh, uh, find you know some of the parts uh, uh, for a machine if it's missing parts. But we do have the seals. Uh, we can make the machines work. I'm looking forward to putting these together and seeing them in action and we'll cover that in, a, in another video down the line. I hope this has been a help to you.